Hello YouTube, welcome to another free to play video and in this one I've got a pretty fun list it's another one like our mages, it's not going to be as competitively viable but it's it's a lot of fun in my opinion um, I woke up this morning and I decided I've really wanted to try this for quite a while it's a, a free to play Cloudian list um, because a lot of, I knew a lot of the cards are just rares, the core of the deck is just rares. Um, you've got Acid Cloud, Altus, and Sirostratus. Sirostratus, I think is the right pronunciation. And then you've got the Sanctuary in the Sky, which combos well with the Cloudians, it's only a rare. We've got this, which is a super rare, but you obtain it with card tickets. I'm pretty sure card tickets or the event. If you did do the event, you'll have it, but card tickets as well. You have the UR and Plasma, but that's just um, from the structure deck. The starter deck, sorry. That's the Phoenix. And you've got Solemn Scoldings, which again are card tickets. And the Avarice. Now, where did I get the Avarice? It is from a Chaotic Compliance. You don't even need to run the Avarice. You could run something else in its place. I mainly have that there to stop... Um, in those situations to stop me from decking out Because with Cloudians you can just sit there um, And stall them out and then with Jai you can deck them out But you could run something else in this place like maybe Econ um, Alright, so let's get into the deck. What do these cards do? Um, you've got back row destruction if this has two fog counters on it Or you remove two fog counters from this card to destroy a spell or trap card and when you normal summon it, it gains one fog can of every Cloudian monster on the field, including itself. So you'd need to have one other Cloudian on the field, then summon this, then it would have its two counters. Uh, so you've got your back row destruction. This is the same thing, but it's for monster destruction. So it can deal with the back row, it can deal with monsters. These do target though. So obviously Cockatus, it's big in the meta. It's You couldn't destroy Cockatus, but... That next we have Altus, which is just a little bit of a bigger body. Um, if you have it, hey, if you have this and another Cloudian in hand, you'd probably just want to summon this first so that this would get its two counters, or this. But this you have to remove three counters from anywhere on the field. It doesn't just have to be on this card, anywhere on the field. And then you can discard one random card from your opponent's hand, which can be really nice. If you're sort of grinding out your opponent, you can just sort of discard a card from their hand and limit their options even further. So obviously all of these can't be destroyed by battle, but they can take battle damage over them, which is why you want to run this, which you take no battle damage if you control a fairy type monster, and the damage becomes zero. So these pretty much can't be destroyed by battle and take no battle damage over them, which is good because they're very weak monsters. So that's why you want that. This is just a searcher for the field spell because it's pretty important. Um, you just discard this and you can search and you can grab it from your deck and You can also play this on the field if this is already on the field if you try and play this without the field spell It just gets destroyed, but it's a 2100 uh, Normal summon which is pretty good. It's also a fairy which works with fairy smile Fairy smile I will go over real quick If you normal if you normal draw a fairy monster you gain a thousand life points so this can help you in your stall out, you know, you, you're setting up with your Cloudians, they're sticking on the field because they can't be destroyed by battle, you're not taking damage, you're drawing fairies, you're gaining life points. Solemn Scalding fits in with that. Um, if this card is the only set card in your spell and trap card zone, remember you, you can't just set a bunch of cards, you can't set multiples of these, you can only set one at a time. Um, but it negates a spell, trap, monster effect, or a summon. So it negates anything. It literally negates anything uh, at the cost of 3,000 life, which ordinarily in this game, because you only get 4k life, it's not really worth it. But because we have the opportunity to gain so many life points from Fairy Smile, it becomes more worth it, in my opinion, and it's kind of usable. Um, there is another card that if you don't have scolding or you don't particularly like this card there's another counter trap card um, that can be used that's specific to the field spell yeah divine punishment if sanctuary size on the field 
Um, negate the activation of a spell, trap, or effect monster's effect. Destroy that card. He can do everything except for the normal summon, which Solemn Scrolling can do. But it's just can be used if it's got the field spell on the field. Um, but I like Solemn Scrolling a little bit better because I don't think the life point loss really matters in this deck. As I say, Jar of Avarice, stop yourself from decking out. You don't have to use it, but it's there. And then I got the idea of Destiny Hero Plasma from watching a recent Meta Weekly. The um, Ritual Beast decks started to run this to deal with the invoked matchup. Um, you, pl you play it, uh, it negates all monster effects on the field, and so that lets you suck up the Cockatus. That's why they were kind of running that. And the reason why it's good in Ritual Beasts is because it's very easy for them to just get out three monsters very quickly. This doesn't do it quickly, but you can very easily get in these stall board setups where you just have three Cloudians on the field. Maybe they've used up all their counters. And it gives you a sort of end game win con kind of thing. If you know what I mean. You can keep sort of stalling and drawing, gaining life points and just locking down the board. And there's not much your opponent can do if you if you do get going. It doesn't always work. You know, it's a very slow to get started. But once you do get going, this sort of gives you an, an out in the end game. And then once you draw it, you can jar of avarice. And if you need to stall it even further, you can. But... It's, it's a good boss monster for the deck, where it doesn't really have one without it, so I like it. Let's get into some replays. So once again, yes, I am using replays. I'm well aware that uh, a Cloudian uh, deck isn't competitively viable in this meta, I know. Um, but sometimes you're allowed to have fun with decks. You don't always need to go in with the expectation of winning. Not everyone has their expectation with every deck that they make. Sometimes you just want to play a deck that is a little bit fun, a little bit off meta. And that's kind of what this is. So this first match is against Yami Yugi. I don't remember all of these off by heart, but we open up quite well. So all these are wins, but it's important to just recognize that this is what the deck looks like when it's winning and what it needs to do what it needs to win we have this golding we have this sanctuary in the sky and we have acid cloud and the Stratus. i'm hoping i'm hoping i'm not butchering it Zero Stratus. so we activate the field spell it gets cosmic that kind of sucks um it definitely sucks without the field spell we do take a lot of damage and it makes the Solemn Scalding a little bit more difficult to use, considering we're going to be a bit more open. So now he has no back row. I want to summon the Acid Cloud first, so that the Zero Stratus will get the two counters to destroy a monster. Because it doesn't seem to be a very back row focused deck. And we have the Solding through in the gate. And unfortunately, he has another Cosmic Cyclone. Um, it's not worth activating to negate it, because you're taking 3k damage, and it's just to negate, you know, a Cosmic is not really worth it. Thankfully, we get another Sanctuary in the Sky. Now, this could have been a Sanctuary, and it could have also been the Zerald to uh, discard and search it from the deck. We won, like, six copies of the Field Spell, essentially, so it's pretty consistent to, to get it, and it's a pretty important part of the deck. And now we can go into our Suo Stratus. Surprised he didn't flip this up to attack over this while there was no field spell. We stop that from flipping up so he doesn't get the search. And because of the two Cosmics, the little chip damage has actually got him quite low. That lets him activate the Sorcery Conduit. He'll pull another Alesta. Such as Invocation. Now, I don't believe he has a water to use yet, but he goes for the Power of Guardians. I believe because he didn't use the Invocation here, he didn't have any of the materials he needed. So he's got the Power of the Guardians, but we have another Acid Cloud uh, in the hand already. Fairy Smile, gain some life. 
Oh, interesting. I decided not to go for it. I decided not to go for it, I think, because, you know, there's not much he can do right now. He can't destroy any my monsters. I'm not going to be taking any damage. I mainly want to limit the plays he can make. And I do that by discarding a card in his hand. I get rid of the invocation, which was huge. I think perhaps he has another one in hand, but it keeps his hand size very low. And it doesn't matter how many counters the power of the guardians is going to get, because at any point we can just summon this and destroy it. Fairy smile. So these monsters, I don't know if I covered that. If this card is in defense position, destroy it, basically. So it does make them quite weak to econ. If they get canadian or floodgated, they don't get destroyed. But they do open themselves up to be destroyed by battle. It's only if it's like face up. Um, I'm pretty sure anyway. If this card is... Yeah, because I remember in a re in a one of my games. I got sort of canadian. I got put in face and defense. And then when I attacked, I got flipped up. I didn't get automatically destroyed. But I didn't get protected from battle. So that's kind of how that interaction works. But it does mean that at any point, if I need to find some space on the field, I can just put it in defense, it'll get destroyed. If it's got no counters on it, I don't need it on the field anymore. And so I can just summon another one and pop more things, which is what I do here. Acid Cloud gets three counters, pops that. Which actually means I can use my Altus, attack over the Leicester. And he's getting quite low. He can't really afford to take any more damage. He goes for King of the Swamp, searches for Polymerization. Now he's going to fuse. I forget what he fuses into. Dark Cavalry, which has targeting protection only when you have a something to discard. And he's all out of cards now, which is thanks to Altus as well. Do this. Chuck this in defense. Make room for Zero Stratus. He's got no cards to protect himself. I actually pop it, and I win. So that was kind of a very grindy game. I managed to sort of stall out all of his resources slowly. Um, pretty good stuff. I think him not having um, the materials needed for invocation was definitely a factor. Um, if normally if they have the water, it's a bit of a rougher game, but again, we have the long game out for that in plasma It would just would have gone on for a lot longer So we are versing a 30 card Jesse Anderson um, A new popular way of running Christians, which you'll find out that's what it is Is by running the transcendent crystals with the crystal beasts to get things on the field that you can pop with your Christians Kind of a new way to run it. So again, we have Sanctuary in the Sky, we have Solemn Scolding, and we open up with a Cloudian. That's kind of what you need to win. If you open up with a handful of Cloudians, it's pretty rough. If you open up too many of these, it's pretty rough. If you don't have Negates, no Negates isn't the end of the world, but it does give you nice safety. I would say that you could still get by without the Negates, but... You need Cloudians and you need the field spell. It's the most important part. So I was pretty sure this was a Chris job list. Maybe I was mistaken. Maybe it is just Crystal Beasts. A 30 card Crystal Beast. So we pop the Wall of Disruption. This only has one counter so we can't pop a monster. Um, we're all protected from battle damage. My turn. No battle damage here. I just assume that's what it was because um, Crystal and this tend to be 30 cards and they tend to also include the Crystal Beast engine. So he's only got one card. We discard it. It is just Crystal Beast engine. Hmm. So again... This isn't competitive with Viable. I'm not going against another meta deck. But it's more showing you how 
quickly you can get into this stall situation. And I think this is a game where we actually summon the plasma. We're slowly gaining life. I get rid of the cloud. Summon another cloud. Pop the back row again. Because popping none of these, any of these doesn't really matter. I'm anticipating the crystal regeki. Um, kind of waiting for it. I decide I can afford to use one scolding because I have another in hand. And I have enough life points to support it as well. He has the Emerald Tortoise. Now, I've ditched the Rainbow Dragon out of his hand. So, unless he's running two, he's kind of in a bad spot. And he's also not running Rainbow Over Dragon. Keep it up. Keep popping that back row. That's the Bugeki I was expecting. Got to get rid of the Crystal Beast as sort of a cost. And then I negate. So, he loses both. And he popped that before I even targeted it. So I get to pop the other one as well. And that is another three counters on the field that Altus can use to discard. So now he's got no back row. Only monsters. Here comes the plasma. And this is now he's like really out of resources. And here's the swing turn. Summon the plasma. Clear his field. He's only got two cards. Uses Transcendent Crystals. Didn't have a very good hand. Just gets him on the field, but uh, that is the GG. All thanks to Plasma. Helping me break through that board because the Cloudians are just too small. That's why you really do need something like a boss monster like Plasma. And Plasma just fits really well with, it, with this deck. And it fits really well with the meta as well. So I'm super glad I watched that meta weekly and saw these uh, Witchel Beast decks using it. So we're checking out this deck. It's a, against another Yami Yugi. So as I mentioned earlier, we don't have that negate. But we have a cloud in. We have a field spell. We're going to be fairly secure on that. He sets two. And unfortunately I don't have an acid cloud. So I need to be quite passive here. And we have the jar of, early jar of avarice. Um, not really needed this early on. Unfortunately power dark makes us even weaker. I decide to swing. No back row activations. I'm thinking a wall of D that he doesn't really want to use on the one monster. I summon. So I should probably end here. Yeah, because I think if I had swung then, he would have activated like a drowning or a wall of D. Something he didn't want to waste on just the one. I'm sitting here with two counters. I don't need to activate it on that turn. But as long as it's sitting here with two counters, I can activate it. And destroy any monster at any point. He goes for the illusion, illusion magic. Onto that. So he's comboing off with his navigation. I think before he didn't have. The dark magician in hand. But he will now. I summon acid cloud. I get three counters. I have to pick which back row I want to hit. I target the left. I get rid of a thousand knives. Which is huge. Because that's one of the only ways that a Dark Magician deck could destroy my monsters. Super glad I did that. Super glad that he bluffed it. Super glad that I took it out as well. So what I think this player can actually do is use the navigation to negate my field spell. So I do take battle damage. He doesn't decide to do it, but I think it's something he actually could have done. Um... And I would have just taken lethal damage there. Well, I'm actually at 6k, so it wouldn't have been lethal damage. But it'd be getting there, wouldn't it? So I activate it. I pop his monster. I then destroy that. Summon another one. Pop his other monster. And that's both Dark Magicians gone. Just like that, thanks to the Zero Stratus. Summons a rod. Grabs himself a Chaos Form. Now, we really do need another Acid Cloud to take out this back row because there's so much of it. Hopefully, we top deck one. We top deck one. Fairy Smile, gain a thousand. We don't have any negates. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Destroy that Acid Cloud. I want to discard a card in his hand now. We hit. 
another Dark Magician. Now that's going to turn off any other navigations he has. Scoop it up. Scoop it up. You knew he had a navigation. I guess he couldn't react to it. There was some plays you could make, but they wouldn't actually have won you the game now that I'm thinking about it. Because I was thinking about negating the field spell that turn, but by that point I was already at 6k life. So it wasn't going to be the OTK he needed. It's kind of really interesting. But again, take out the the biggest uh, hit that you can do on this deck is early cosmic on the field spell and me not having a follow up one. The field spell is so important to winning with this deck. It's super important. So here's the last we play. As long as there is a single glimmer of light, as you can see, scolding field spell Cloudian. You won't always get them, but when you do get them, it's the most conducive hand to winning. And we have Altius. Altus. Not Altius. So summon the Altius first so that the Asura Stratus can get its two counters next turn. I decide to go for the early negates onto the Chocolate Magician Girl because I don't want it to be able to discard. And start getting its engine going. I top an acid cloud, which is super clutch, because uh, I popped the back row, and this was actually drowning, wasn't it? And I was thinking of swinging this turn, so I managed to actually pop the drowning, which is super clutch. If I, but if I didn't get the acid cloud, I probably wouldn't have attacked. So he gets another magician girl. Now here's what I found a little bit interesting. I summon a Zero Stratus. Um, when you normal summon this card, place one, remove two counters, destroy one card on destroy a monster on the field. Now I can only assume that it actually doesn't target, which I would have found very strange because when I target this, or when I go to destroy this, once per turn, if this card is targeted for an attack, oh, it's only an attack. So I managed to pop his. Chocolate Magician Girl without any um, of its effects going off. But I think if it was another Magician Girl, it would be a target. And so it would have uh, floated off into other things. But because it was a Magician Girl, a Chocolate Magician Girl, we actually managed to just get a really quick win there. Thanks to the Solemn Scolding on the first one and me just popping the next one. Clapped him. So that's the deck. I hope you enjoyed it. It's uh, it's just a little bit of a meme, a little bit of fun deck. Um, obviously, it's a very slow start, but once you get going, it can be pretty fun. You keep popping your own monsters, popping their backline and their monsters. Get out your plasma and do a big swing turn. It can be pretty fun. And constantly, you're just gaining life points. You get to use the most powerful counter trap in the in the game, in my opinion. It's just not used because of the life point cost. And then if you win, you can even win by deck out if you so choose. There's a lot of other different ways of taking the deck as well. Um, and they're all very cheap. There's things like Diamond Dust, which I probably wouldn't use, but it's like a potentially a draw four. Right? Draw one card. It's at least a draw four if you get to play it. It's a pot of green on steroids. And you've got fog control. Tribute of Cloudian, place three fog counters on the field, so that kind of fog counter generation is kind of a really good thing to have. Same with Cloudian Swall, just a fog counter generation, so you don't need to keep destroying your monsters, you can just keep activating them. Um, but yeah, it was a ton of fun. Um, have fun with the deck. Um, if you do decide to use it on ranked, again, it probably won't hold up in like Legend. Uh, or King of Games, but it could hold up in like plat or lower in my opinion and uh, See you in the next video. Peace